Welcome to the third episode in my camera trap diaries for this year and I've come back down to the ravine. Uh, I've just recovered the uh, trail cam that I put on the tree uh, up on the embankment just up there overlooking what I suspected was a badger den. Um, I only got three recordings on it and the only thing I could make out on it with any uh, definite sort of uh, identification was uh, a couple of roe deer that came down uh, past the dens. There's been a little bit of activity, there was a whole load, three, four, five shots I think that were uh, a blackbird. Uh, and then the other ones I can't quite make out, so I'll have to look at those on the laptop later. Um, it's been out for 11 days now. I've had quite a busy uh, week with my um, workshop for the pelicans. Um, and uh, in that time, unfortunately, we also found an abandoned puppy, uh, which had been either hit by a car or trampled on by buffalo or kicked by a human or God knows what. And um, uh, it had a really nastily broken leg and was a bit bashed up. So I took it into the vets and they held him for a week. Uh, six days. Um, put him on, on uh, a drip. Did some blood tests on him. That sort of thing. Um, X-rayed his leg, which is, turns out is broken in three places. Um, and I went yesterday and collected him from the vet and we have to wait until next week for another round of x-rays to see if uh, he can have an operation to save his leg. So that's been a bit uh, traumatic, uh, to say the least, uh, very upsetting. So I've got him at home at the moment. Um, when I brought him back home, gave him a bit of a bath because he hasn't been washed at all since we found him got all the grime and muck off him, cleaned out his wound, which he had a little wound on the cheek, which seems to be healing okay. And uh, yeah, I've just got to look after him and wait till next week to see what uh, the next round of x-rays shows. But um, really saddening to, to, to find such a poorly uh, little um, puppy. It's an absolutely gorgeous little thing as well. Anyhow, so... It's been, like I said, 11 days since I've been back here. This is, in fact, day 12, so it's been out 11 nights. And for the camera up there at the um, Badger's Den not to have recorded anything uh, moving in and out of the, of the den, I'm assuming that it is not in use, at least uh, for the moment. So I've come down now to my camera trap. Um, God knows if anything's on it. 
Um, maybe the deer that came through the trail cam on the Badger's Den have come past here and had their photo taken. Uh, we shall see. I doubt it's firing. I'm sure after 11 days the batteries are well dead. Uh, but we shall see just at the location here. So this is the the camera which I camouflaged up and the trigger and the trail cam is up there on the tree and the other flash looking at me and it hasn't triggered now which uh, I'm assuming means that the batteries are completely dead so I shall, depending if there's anything on it or not uh, either break it down, take it away, clean it out, try and find another location or replace batteries of which I've got plenty in my backpack and um, leave it out for a bit longer or maybe even if I go up the ravine a bit further and see if I can find another location for it, maybe I'll put it there, we'll see. So let me just do that and I'll get back to you with any results. Bear with me. Let's have a look at the trail cam first. Oh, the badger. And... and the um, camera didn't fire for it. So let's see if there's anything on it. Zero, not a single shot. Okay, which means this ravine is not being used, other than that badger for which this camera didn't fire. Okay, so that being the case, the uh, camera hasn't fired at all, not a single shot. Only one badger came through here, no deer. Uh, which means this is probably not a worthwhile location for me to pursue, unfortunately. So I'm going to break down the kit, put it away, and just go for a bit of a hike further up the mountain, see if I can find another location, or I might take it back home, uh, give it a proper clean out, um, and rethink the whole setup. Okay, see you in a, way, in a bit. Uh, that was a bit disappointing not to have any pictures whatsoever on the camera and very limited. Uh, recordings on the um, trail cams, but that's par for the course with camera trapping. Anyway, so um, I decided to come up the mountain uh, a fair way um, to see if I might be lucky enough to find another location. And I found this intersection here of paths. So there's one path that goes up behind me, oops, wrong way, this way, uh, and that comes down the hill this way behind me and then this one up up on the hill forks and comes down uh, past this lovely tree here uh, so what I've done and it's full of moss and everything so it looks really pretty so what I've done is I've set the camera up down here uh, with both flashes one flash uh, illuminating the tree and the other a flash illuminating the path so they're both direct flashes uh, I really need to set myself up with a third flash because this would be ideal for a three flash setup, I think. Um, the pier is really difficult to position because I don't want it just pointing generically up the hill where the deer might come from because I suspect this is a deer path. Um, I want it to actually trigger when the deer crosses or whatever animal comes across passes a certain point um, so as they're in frame when the flash goes off, just in case they do bolt, uh, they do get scared by the flash. Uh, although from experience the deer don't seem to be too bothered by it. Um, so I've set that up on the tree, on a branch here, overlooking the path, the branch of the path that uh, goes down that way, uh, which is hopefully the one they'll use, which is the one I want in frame, with the tree, etc. It makes for a nice composition. So fingers crossed they will come down that way as well. Um, what else? And I've set the trail cam, one trail cam 
next to the camera down there, and another one all the way up the path uh, at the top of this little hill here, uh, looking down, uh, in case something comes up the path rather than down it. So, um, I've changed out all the batteries, so they're all fresh, good to go. Uh, so all that remains is for me to camouflage that up a little bit, um, so it's not so obvious. Uh, make sure it's all firing, uh, and I'll be back in a few days' time to uh, see if there's anything on it. So, uh, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, I shall catch up with you in a few days' time. See you then. So, um, this is probably not the scene that you were expecting to see next in this video, and I shall try to explain why, uh, what's happened. Um, so it's been two weeks since I relocated the uh, camera trap up on the mountain. Um, and I only managed to get up there yesterday, um, um, mostly because I was uh, ill with flu. Um, I had a couple of days guiding, uh, then I've been looking after the pup as well, running him into the vets and what have you. So I've been a little bit preoccupied to get it back up there. And um, I managed to get up there yesterday, and disappointingly enough, there was absolutely nothing on the camera. Uh, on the DSLR, absolutely zero photos, not even a false trigger. The trail cams picked up uh, a little bit of activity from mice, uh, birds. Uh, one of the trail cams picked up a little stone martin, uh, and that was it. So um, I decided uh, to pack it all up, bring it back, um, and uh, clean it out and see if I can find another location. And whilst I was doing that, I had a thought that I've been hearing uh, little owls in, um, in, in and around the garden, uh, in the whole area, really, um, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, a barn owl as well, screeching uh, for a few nights. So I thought, uh, I have this dead tree back here in the garden, and maybe they're using it as a perch. Um, there's a little bit of evidence uh, of it's being used with poop. Uh, there's evidence of woodpecker uh, hacking away at it a little bit. Um, so I thought why not try and set the camera up here and see if we might get lucky. Uh, so I did all that when, when I brought the kit back yesterday. I'll show you quickly what I, how I set it up. Um, the tripod as you can see is on the tree. It looks rather precarious but what I've done is I've put these brackets uh, screwed these brackets into the tree, holding the legs in place uh, to hold the camera securely. I've got the camera here facing the limb that I suspect they're using. One of the flashes is on the tripod looking upwards. And then on the other dead limb I have the other flash, uh, the peer sensor and a trail cam. And the view is looking towards the mountain there uh, in the hope that if we get a long exposure and a clear night, we might get some starlight as well. Um, so, that's what I set up yesterday, um, without any expectations of actually getting anything, and lo and behold, I got this image last night, uh, which blew me away. Uh, just a single shot of a little owl uh, landing on the limb, and... Uh, um, the trail ca even the trail cam didn't pick anything up. So, finally, success at last in my own backyard, after all the effort uh, of hiking up the mountain, setting it up, trail cams and what have you, with no luck, and I get a result in my own, in my own garden. Such as uh, camera trapping. Anyway, so I shall leave that up for a few nights more, uh, in the hope that we might uh, record some more pictures. Uh, and. I shall wrap up this video. Um, I'm going to go for a hike up that mountain um, with the dog in the hope of finding another location. I'd really like to find one with some running water if possible. Um, uh, and in the meantime I'll leave this up. Uh, but all of that will be hopefully in the next one. So thank you so much for following along. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, and I shall see you again very, very soon. Thanks so much. Bye for now.